Hi, hi, and welcome back to my channel, Country Conversations with the Diva D. I've been gone for a minute, now I'm back with the jump off chat. During these Christmas holidays, every year my young pharaohs get sick. But, <laughs> I had to hop on and get on here and give y'all a little something, something, something what you been missing. Now. How you doing in honor of Mother Wendy? Now, let me just say this, right? Twitter has been going cray-cray about this business with Dr. Jack. And, of course, we don't get into it because I know for a fact that I was one of the first persons, if not the first person, to tweet about her little Medicaid situation. Then other things start popping out about, you know, you know, black mothers being lazy and wanting to call off from work. So we're going to talk about that because I know everybody else is talking about it. But I got a different little spin on it to add to it as an elderly mother who is black and partially obesity. Obese, I know, I know, I know. Obese, okay. And we just gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. Now, first of all, let's get into some Caucasian people news. Let's talk about what the Caucasians are doing. Okay, now you know this fellow by the name of Jim Snyder, right? Or uh, is it John Snyder? I can't remember. Anyway, he's from Dukes of Hazard. We're going to talk about it. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Jonathan Majors and Christian Keys. We got to get it all into this nice little piping hot tea for today. Now, let's get right on into it. Let's talk about Mr. John Schneider. Now, if you don't know John Schneider, if you're not an 80s kid, 90s kid, growing up in the 80s and the 90s, then you don't know about Dukes of Hazard and them riding around in that racist vehicle called the Confederate Lee. But did we know what it was back then? Mm -mm, mm -mm, honey, we did not know that the Confederate General Lee was a representation of the good Southern Christian values that they had. You know, running around that little orange vehicle. Because all we knew to do was root for them riding around in that good Dodge Charger called the General Lee. But even my parents, who were very staunch NAACP members, did not educate me on what that meant. So that big old nice Confederate flag sitting up on the hood and on sides of the doors and um shrunk a little bit. Mm -mm. Wasn't explained to me. <laughs> but if you don't remember him from that, let's talk about black folks, um black folks knew and how we might know. He, he was on the good uh, haves and have not. Tyler Perry haves and have not. Now, we going to get into some Tyler Perry news because things are going problematic for Mr. Tyler Perry as well. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about Caucasian news. John Schneider, under Secret Service investigation after calling for the beheading allegedly 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 calling for the beheading and the public hanging of our good president mr joe biden mm, mm -mm. now it's one thing that the good conservatives are going to do. They're going to back each other up, okay? So a lot of people online are coming to his defense saying that, you know, nothing happened to Kathy Griffin. Wrong example. Wrong example. She was dragged, 
almost kicked out of the country and investigated. So, brother, you are not exempt. Okay? Now, see, when he used to make those little racist statements in Hams and Have Not, I used to be like, mm 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 Jim, 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 Jim. That's coming from your soul. Right? Now, sometimes you could tell, like, a little bit that they ain't, ain't too comfortable saying the hard er and things like that because you know on the show he was best friends with a, another black couple but as the show started getting stale and progressing and things like that you find out that he was sleeping with a lot of uh black women on the show candace being one of them but that's how the st show started out. I'm talking about how we later on found out that he was sleeping with Valerie. I think that's her name, the other. No, Veronica. I got the V right. And we found out he was sleeping with Veronica as well. But, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to hide it behind acting. Like when Leonardo DiCaprio played in Django Unchained, you was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. He is pretty comfortable saying it. But at the same time, you didn't really realize that he was just like really that person. But even with the little racial undertones that Jim would give on the show, it seemed to me like he just really meant it from the soul. Now, when he wasn't getting any, excuse me, acting roles at all, I hope that didn't come out because I'm like talking and then, you know, I got acid reflux. <laughs> but anyway, it's so embarrassing. But anyway, um, you know, like in that show, you know, he had the little racial undertones and you'd be like, hmm. It's just like to me when you see some of these actors playing these racist roles or whatever, you think to yourself, you know, just maybe, you know, that might just be how they really feel. And in, in my spirit, at times, I used to be like, mm-hmm, that's him. That's him. That's how you really feel. But anyway, he's under investigation according to people. And um, it says, I'm going to read some of this article. It says, according to Deadline, after the Deuce of Hazard. Now, mind you, Tyler Perry was the only one checking for him. For years, he wasn't acting. Okay. Black man gave him a child. 63-year-old John Schneider expressed that President Joe Biden should be publicly hanged and deleted and so should his son. Now, you can dislike Hunter Biden all you want to. He is not the president. <laughs> okay? You, I don't care who you are, you cannot, and I don't care if the president is not your president, you cannot publicly make these type of statements and think, think you're going to get away with it. I don't care how much you dislike them, and I don't care what color you are, they're going to be on your ass, and that's facts on that. Yeah, as I was saying. You cannot just uh, threaten high security officials again. Just like with my phone and I'm making these videos, you think that you can scrub whatever you want to scrub by deleting. The government has the intricate systems that are smarter than the smartest smartphone. And then you tweeted it on top of that. Now, I'm not saying just because you are a Trump supporter that you are racist. Let's just say you have a little racism in you. <laughs> okay. And again, when the Caucasian people wasn't checking for you to give you a job, it was black men. And then your show became the number one show on on. Y'all got Miss Scripted TV on on. What happened to that show about the wine being? But I'm getting off topic. Let me stay on course. 
But um, yeah, so, and I'm not saying that he's racist per se, just because he's a Trump supporter. But here come the Caucasian people with their cake. He didn't say anything wrong. What did he say that other Democrats didn't say against Trump? Mm -hmm. The one Democrat that said something against Trump almost got exiled from the country. And then there were others saying that you want to leave the country if a certain president gets elected is not a threat to the president. <laughs> so, Come on, people. If you're going to come up with comparisons, come up with legit, true comparisons that are comparable. The written in that man's life is not comparable to saying that you want to leave the country if a certain president gets elected. And that just is what it is on that. The man is being accused of starting the January 6th insurrection. So, you know, he shouldn't even be allowed to run for president in my opinion but that's not a threat against him that's not something that can get me exiled from the country okay jim snyder gotta be smarter than that moving right along we're gonna get it on back into um the news that uh we you I think that was relevant due to the fact that old good jim was over there all haves and have nots but we have to be very cognizant of, you know, what we say. And that leads us into Dr. Jackie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie from Mary to Medicine. Okay. We're just going to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Now, the other day when I did my Mary to Medicine recap i clearly stated that i did not agree with you can go back in and watch it. i clearly stated that i did not agree with her being the one to represent poor black african-american women who were having high mortality rates because she didn't represent them as far as having them as patient. So I honestly thought that she was the wrong person to be an advocate for them. I felt that way. That was my opinion. Then things started flowing out about what she was actually saying about these women. Now, on, um, some of the people have been tweeting, a lot of people has been tweeting in her support, but Buffy um, came out and said that she was going to keep her foot on her neck because her aunt was one of those people who had um, died in childbirth, tried to deliver her child. And uh, a lot of times when, like, for example, me, you know, we are, when I was carrying my babies, I've told a story. I was 41 years old already high risk i had a male doctor and then i had a female doctor female caucasian lady when i went to him i noticed that there were some insensitivities there i was impressed with uh his bedside man he wasn't mean it was just the old people jokes that he was making about me and my uterus okay i changed doctors I'll tell this, a little bit of that story later on in this when we're talking about Dr. Jake. Well, anyway, I could speak to this as a mother who had two high-risk pregnancies, not because I didn't follow suit or do what I was supposed to do. It was just because of my age, simply because of that. Now, Dr. Jackie, um, uh, one of her old nurses has come out and said, that she does indeed take Medicaid. Uh, no, she don't. <laughs> no, she don't. Because it was either in the season three or four reunion. 
and the ex because a lot of people were jealous of Dr. Jackie Guinness high profile, high celebrity of clients in the Atlanta area. So, Andy asked, I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, who all on this cast goes to Dr. Jackie? I believe Mariah was still on there as a friend because I think this was the year she had been demoted. Uh, Mariah said, Simone delivered my babies. Dr. Simone delivered my babies. Just like that. Okay. Went to the next person. He asked, Toya. She said that I don't remember if she said that either one of them delivered her children, but I know she said, Simone is my gynecologist. Just like that. And then he said, why not Dr. Jackie? Go back and look at it. I am not telling a lie. I don't have any reason to get on here and lie on this one. <laughs> okay? Not benefiting me. Then he asked Toy. When he asked Toy, she said, when I like I said, she said, Simone is my gynecologist because Dr. Jackie don't take no insurance. Just like that. And then he said, Jackie, well, Dr. Jackie, you don't take patients. Dr. Jackie, you don't take insurance? Like that. And she said, and she kept that little Mimi Pew Pew attitude that she does when she don't want to really answer a question and kept her mouth tight lip. And she let Heavenly, who was her little watchdog, come in and answer for her. Now she know. And proudly, Dr. Heavenly said, and she don't take no Medicaid either. Go back and watch it. So I said all that to say. Buffett didn't lie on this woman when she said that she don't serve underprivileged. Because if you don't serve, if you don't take Medicaid, then you don't deserve underprivileged. And a lot of middle class and working class women who do, who can afford insurance, she must not take that either. Because if she didn't take the insurance from a doctor's wife, she don't take your insurance, average working American or uh, underprivileged American, black American. She don't take yours either. That's, that's deductive reason. Common sense. Okay. So I'll say this. I like Dr. Jackie up until this point, even though after that episode, I felt some kind of way when they said she didn't take insurance. So I'm like, she's serving black people. And she don't take insurance and she don't take Medicaid. Is she for the people? I mean, even um, with my doctor, I give my doctor for example. She took Medicaid, Caucasian lady, like I said. She took Medicaid. Not only did she take Medicaid, but if there was a clinic that she would like work on, like on part time and she was called in to help other clinics, she would do that for those clinics, like go to like the health department, help them out, things like that, to just be out there serving women who she knew uh, weren't getting, you know, proper services in her office. And I thought about that thing. I said, so, well, maybe Dr. Jackie takes Medicaid, like when she goes out and services the community, like doing, you know, good charity work, you know, just out of the countenance of the heart, like my doctor did. I haven't heard that she did that. So I said, okay, well, that never did come out. It never did surface that she would provide, like, um, services, like, where she would go into, like, these underprivileged clinics and take Medicaid that way and go ahead and provide underprivileged people with services. I never heard that. All I've ever heard is that she want her money up front. And then Dr. Heavily proudly said, I don't take no insurance either. So, Dr. Heavenly don't service the poor either, if you really want to know the truth. But while she's always backing Dr. Jackie in her mess, she also needs to be reminded that Dr. Jackie is the one who's always clarifying that she's a dentist, not a doctor. Even though she has a DD behind her name and has to be called a doctor as well, she always clarifies. 
she's a dentist. On one episode on Watch What Happens Live, he, uh, um, Dr. Uh, I mean, Andy asked her, he was like, so if you were on a plane, who would you choose to save your life? Because uh, uh, Simone and her was into it at this point. She and Simone were into it at this point, and she said, well, heaven is a dentist and not a doctor. So I would pick uh, Simone. As if your degree is under hers because Simone could save her life. Now, it's my understanding that dentists, if you get a little too much latticane, whatever that it is, the dead and stuff they put in your mouth, they better have some life-saving techniques <laughs> to pull you out of whatever you're going through in case something happens to you or you go into a coma because they do provide anesthesia just like any other doctor. So when I'm trusting my dentist uh, and I, you know, she pulls me out of whatever little sedation she has me on it and I don't come out and I'm, my heart stops or whatever, I, I'm trusting that she could get on top of me and pump some life back into me. So, uh, okay. So I feel like dentists are indeed doctors. I believe anybody that works on a dead body or a cadaver is a doctor in my opinion. If, then you get your letters behind your name. Okay. So, in this interview with Dr. Heaven, with Dr. Heavenly, with Dr. Heavenly. Oh, 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 back to Buffy. I want to just say this about Buffy right quick. She has been on her neck. She has been on her neck ever since she said, Buffy, you know what it's like. You're infertile. Now, on that episode, a lot of people felt uncomfortable with that statement that she made. And I felt uncomfortable with it, too. And all this controversy came up about uh, if she broke HIPAA policy and all this type of stuff. She did not. Okay? You have to be... And it was just like, oh, she broke HIPAA. She broke HIPAA. Buffy, first of all, was not her patient. And she says that a lot, but people still say that she broke HIPAA policy. No, she did. She didn't break HIPAA policy because the one thing that is irritating me about Buffy is that she stated that she was infertile herself. She stated it on the show, so it still was going to make national news whether she stated it or be on national TV, whether Dr. Jackie stated it at that uh, function or whether she stated it in her ear. The point is, it was out there. She had talked about how she had so many miscarriages, this, that, and the third. Now, maybe she was embarrassed in the moment when Dr. Jackie said it on stage, but were you embarrassed in the moment with you telling it on the show? That's the question. And she's playing victim a little bit to me. I don't really care for this whole campaign that she has, per se, against Dr. Jackie, even though now that she's come out and she talked about she don't serve underprivileged and all that type of stuff, and that maybe Kamala has should have revisited that and picked Simone. She wasn't going to pick Simone. She picked Dr. Jackie because she's the AKA, and I'm just going to say it like that. That's how I feel about that. Um, but she, um, she maybe should... <laughs> She maybe should have put uh picked um Simone. Okay. But that wouldn't have flowed right with the show. Now would it? So here's the deal. Um Dr. Jackie stated that she also was infertile. Okay, so that's why I'm just not rocking with Buffy 100 percent on this because like I said, she has been acting completely bitter period talking about she attacked her uterus and all this so types no she did she did say she was infertile i felt uncomfortable when she said it and i was like oh wow but to drag it on for four or five years and talk about it in this way uh-uh this situation that we're talking about right now 
should be dragged on because she said that black women have a tendency to cry wolf. Unacceptable. Now, I said that I was going to go and tell my story. Okay, first pregnancy. Like I said, I had two high risk pregnancies just because of my age. I did everything the doctor told me to do and some things she didn't tell me to do. I ate right, took my vitamins, took my prenatal vitamins, and I lost weight during my pregnancy because I stayed active. Dr. Jackie is right. Of course, you're supposed to stay active with your pregnancy. But once I had my second child, I couldn't be as active as I wanted to be, like with the first one, because I had a lot of pain in my pelvic area because I had placenta previous. So I had to cut it back on the physical exercise and stuff, but I continued to eat right. I cut back on the sodium. I cut back on uh, a whole lot of things that, you know, a lot of women crave because I knew that I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to get, I can't think of the name of that swelling illness that, preeclampsia. I know I didn't want to go into that. So I cut back anyway. I, like I said, I had no swelling with either pregnancy. But I'm going to tell the story about when I started going to my female white doctor. I told this on Twitter. I told her. Um, she told me um, it's some great, because after I had stopped seeing my male doctor, she was like, yeah, 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 some great male doctors in here, but they will never know what it's like to be a woman and give birth. I know what that's like. So I'm going to take any complaint that you have seriously. Because when I first started seeing her, I was 40. And she's like, where is that 40 year old mother that's supposed to be having this baby? Came in with the sweetest attitude. I say over there and I pointed at my sister and I was sitting on the table. She said, no, 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 I think you should. <laughs> And so I knew right then that she had the best bedside manner and I didn't mind going to her for anything. Um, when I suspected that I may have listened to previous because my baby was, she kept, you know, stabbing me in my upper <laughs> rib under my breast. Mm -mm. She was like, no, 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 you're going to have that type of pain. But she didn't say, well, you know, you're just trying to take off work, being lazy, whatever. Okay, second pregnancy. I'm talking about when I was in labor. When I was in labor, I had all Caucasian nurses, right? And again, you still have to look at it to the fact that they're compassionate with you because they are women. But because my regular doctor wasn't on call that night that I went into labor, she wasn't there. But she had given him, you know, the proper instructions on how to take care of me. I felt I was in good hands because she had talked to him before she left. Before she even left the hospital, she talked to him, right? So during the night, I'm getting further and further in pain and more and more pain and stuff like that. So he was trying to wait to give me my epidural so I could dilate more. But those Caucasian nurses and my sister were out there in the hallway. I didn't even know what they were doing. Advocating for me. It was like, this is a different kind of pain. Give her an epidural. And he's like, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. We're going to wait a little bit more. And my sister said he was out there drinking coffee. And she said one of those Caucasian nurses like kind of hit down on the table and was like, no, doc, give her something now. Okay. So in front of my sister and with that Caucasian nurse advocating for me, he finally came in and gave me some pain medication. Now I'm telling you what I know. <laughs> okay. So I'm wondering if the same thing is going on with Dr. Jackie. It might be a little missing insensitive, why can't I say this word? Insensitivity chip 
there because she never gave birth. And I hate to say that about another woman because I know that's what she wanted to do. You know, cancer took away of her chances of having a baby, but so did her husband. <laughs> okay. Because uh, like I told her, and I said in my video, she could have done IVF just like anybody else. And she knew the techniques to do in order to get a baby if she wanted one. Same thing with surrogacy. And she advocates for all these other methods that, you know, her husband was the one who wouldn't allow her to use. But you can be a doctor and never experience what it's like to be in that position that your patient is in. And that's all I'm saying is that when her when she's saying that, you know, these women are out here, you know, just want to get off work and they're crying wolf and they're being more dramatic. How are we any more dramatic than a Caucasian woman who is giving birth, an Asian woman who's giving birth, a Latino woman who's giving birth? If you're giving birth, you're going to have some kind of pain. If you don't have any kind of pain giving birth, hey, kudos to you. You are a special person. <laughs> I ain't that special. I had pain. And it wasn't lovely. And it wasn't nice. But you have to have been in that position to be more sensitive in those types of positions. And that's my opinion. I said what I said on that. Now, Dr. Jackie has come out and made a statement. And here's a little piece of what she said in that statement. Um, Dr. Jackie, 65, said it has been her life's work attempting to rectify the issues devastatingly affecting black mothers versus their counterparts. She's been an OBGYN to many celebrities. She said, as we continue to face medical mistreatment and gaslighting, my intention with the broader conversation was to ensure patients enter their pregnancies armed with information and tools to effectively communicate their needs with their doctors and ensure a positive outcome. She went on to say that the clip was from a two hour long conversation and was taken out of context. And she has always advocated for the black females in the maternal health crisis. Okay, that's a good statement. Where's the apology? Where's the accountability, accountability policeman? Or should I say police doctor woman? Wasn't it you, doctor woman, who held quiet to the fire for not taking accountability? It would have been more, I think, sensitive and empathetic had you said, I apologize for making those statements when I made them a while back. That is certainly not how I feel now. And it was my intention to, and then go on to that. Hey, PR over here, PR over here. I could have cleaned that up for you, sis. <laughs> but you handled it the way you handled it with no uh, sympathy or empathy in that statement or apology. You were very robotish. Even though I didn't see you make the statement, I could hear you in my mind making that statement and still feeling like that you had that God-like complex. And when doctors take on that God-like complex, you can best believe that it's times when they don't really put themselves in your position as a patient. That's how I feel. That's how I always feel. And it, it, it's almost very hard, especially when you are black and you have to go to the emergency room because you don't know what you're going to get there. 
And a lot of times, you know, they try to make it sound like you're inflating your symptoms, especially there, because though nine times out of ten, that's not your regular doctor. So they don't know what your uh symptoms are or what you go through as a patient of your regular doctor. And sometimes your regular doctor can be like that. But you can always change those, right? You don't know what you're going to get at the ER. So when I go to the ER, I don't let them talk down to me. The first thing I say is I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel like something was wrong. With you. So you're going to stop with the condescending attitude. Boom. You're a person. I'm a person. You're going to get that out the way. <laughs> I don't play that. Okay. Now don't talk to me like I don't know what you're talking about or can glean through what you're talking about. I ain't the one <laughs> or the two. Okay. So that's how, that's what she meant by advocating for yourself. But then sometimes if you advocate for yourself, they get this little self-righteous attitude where they don't feel like they have to serve you. Well, like I said, if you have Medicaid, Medicare, or state insurance or whatever type of insurance you may have, either way it goes, they're going to get paid. So don't you worry about, um, you know, how are you going to get paid from my pocket? You provide me with the best care that I'm supposed to have by you taking your Hippocratic oath. That goes to you too, Dr. Jackie. Okay. And I'm going to move right along from Dr. Jackie. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, honey. I'm going to move right along. We'll talk a little bit about Kiki Palmer. I don't know if I said anything about her in my... um in my opening, but it's just a little something that I want to say here because it's uh it's amazing to me how we are just that quick turn on and off our switches on how we support this woman. Now, initially we were supporting her because you know we saw the steel shots of what happened to her between her and her children, her child's father. Darius Jackson. Okay. Now it's come out that he's saying that she abused him too. Uh, allegedly. Okay. And uh, he has a uh, a uh, restraining order out against her now. So he reversed that thing and now we're going to reverse our opinions from what we saw in a steel shot and never to disappoint me, but sometimes to disappoint me. My good friend Tasha K was over there down to the Instagram and she made a statement. Why? You don't have to side with Kiki Palmer or whatever, but you know, kind of err on the side of caution. Same thing I would say with these doctors. If you think the symptoms are fake, err on the side of caution and get the proper testing anyway. Same with this lady here. We don't know. None of us know. None of us was there to know how Darius treats Kiki. Only she and he knows that. But it's one thing I do know a abuser will do, allegedly, in my opinion, is what they're going to do is they're going to make it seem like they are the victim. And then all these good men, Savannah women, come out and say, well, you know, she did him too. He, She did. She admitted that she did. Okay, so you're supposed to sit there and if you are an abuse victim, you, what you're supposed to do is sit there and just let somebody go upside your head? No, ma'am. Not I, said the cat. But well, anyway, and this is what my good friend Tosh Casey over there down to the Instagram. It's sad to say, but hashtag kill Kiki Palmer ain't no different than that white woman that involved that was involved with Jonathan Majors. She allowed the public public to think that Darius was abusive, all because he capital 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 letters he didn't want her anymore the public emasculated him 
called him broke, and all sorts of other horrible things. A bitter woman, not capitalized, 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 understanding her own worth and value. So much so, so she couldn't fathom the idea of the so-called capital letters, capital letters, capital letters, broke man could walk away from a capital letters, capital letters, capital letters, broken woman. This ain't the first capital letters, capital letters, capital letters, black man <laughs> that she has slid on or hit. Capital letters, capital letters, allegedly. Smiley face, shades. She is the face of a black, a black hair. Capital letters, capital letters. I will apologize to Darius for all the women. My sincere, my sincere apologies. This is for the culture. I too have a black son. Capital letters, capital letters. That man did not cheat, lie, or hit that little girl. Wow. This lady got a million followers and I only have a hundred and six. But baby, I don't know if she's a shit like that for shock value or what, but I can't get with it. I don't watch Tasha K no more. And I, I mean, even when she was going through that Carly, Carly stuff, Car, Cardi B stuff, and she was wiping her ASS with the uh, cease and desist letter, I was like, this is fucking weird. This is weird. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want these, this pipe hot tea to be uh, too much longer. I'm going to go right along to the next thing, and I'm going to talk quickly about Jonathan Majors. Again, about Jonathan Majors, we have broke out our capes trying to say this black man didn't want us until, and when I say I didn't want us, I mean black women, until he got into the trouble he was in. Next thing you know, he's popped up with a black woman. Uh, at least OJ stepped with the white women. <laughs> if that's your preference, that's your preference. It is what it is, How? Ever. When you was knocking that Caucasian lady upside her head, it ain't a ledge no more because you are convicted, brother. When you're knocking that Caucasian lady upside her head, the point that we are trying to make as black women is not that we want you to knock us upside the head and should have chose us. The point that I'm trying to make when I say that that was your preference, sir, you knew you should have known that you had a better chance of going to jail or knocking the hood upside the head, even if she lied. However, the video footage is out there showing that you all were indeed aggressive to each other, but in that case, it does not matter. You were convicted and you are facing sentencing of this said crime showing that you will potentially allegedly no more allegedly right convicted going upside this woman's head she had scratches she had marks and all the other um things that show this woman was indeed abused by you mr johnson majors so they didn't really need video footage to convince you as a black man hitting a Caucasian woman. What we're saying is, like I said, what I'm saying is your chances are higher going to jail hitting a Caucasian woman. I feel like you should have known that you weren't going to get away with that, especially being that you were on film. Do I feel empathy for Jonathan Majors for losing all of his jobs. I think that was in him, whether he was with a black woman or a white woman. Megan, watch your back. He broke and about to be broke. No job. Got to be in some Tyler Perry plays. <laughs> if anything. That's Tyler Perry gives second chance. So, yeah. so uh, he loved the Builder brother now. He loved good Builder brother. Awesome actor. Can't take that away from him. But we have to be mindful of what our position is 
as black people in America. They will have, they will, uh, as I tell my best friend about her sister who only dates Caucasian men, who told her you acting like a black woman, they'll show you every time. <laughs> Never fail. Things always come out of the little microaggressions, what they'll say to you. You can't miss it. It's going to come out. It is what it is. I have never heard of any of my friends <laughs> who have been in interracial relationship stating that they haven't experienced some type of microaggression. One time he told her, what is that smell in your hair? Oh, now mind you, she don't use grease. She didn't want him to know that we use grease, right? So, he was like, oh, it's pink oil lotion. Oh, honey, you might want to stop using that. It doesn't really smell all that good. Now, anybody know this black, know this pink oil lotion smell? Divide in my pit. Okay? It reduced herself from using grease. Embarrassed to do that. I'm just saying, be ready for that if you decide to go in that direction. You grown, do what you want to do. I'm just saying, it is what it is. You can't escape. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you sitting on the vice president's own. Okay? I don't care if you sitting on Clarence Thomas's own. Those microaggressions come out. They do. You can't avoid it. In my opinion, I said what I said on that. But like I said, you grown, do what you want to do. Just be ready for it. And don't get on TV like Halle Berry said, well, he called me a ninja. He said it. Mm, yeah, yeah, he did. And we supposed to put on our capes and jump on this Caucasian man because he called you that? You surprised? Mm, I don't think you should be. <laughs> I'm just saying. If you don't want to be called that, and Okay, it's gonna, you know, I just, I just, you know, know that I, then you face with the idea, should I stay with my husband? He called me that. That means he's really racist. So that means he's racist against my children that we have together. But he's collecting child support. <laughs> Not funny. Just saying. This is. The hell of everything, right? Collecting child support off of that partially black child. That he thinks the mother is the ninja. Okay? I'm just saying. Moving right along. Um, so we got mixed in the Jonathan Majors and the uh Hell of everything. I mixed all that together to say we're gonna experience microaggressions in these Relationship, same thing. What's what's going on over there with Garcelle on uh, Beverly Hills? <laughs> it is what it is. Now, okay. Now, um, Cardi B. I did not talk about Cardi in my last pipe of hot tea, even though her picture is on the thumbnail. And I did mean to say something about that cheating offset allegedly. I just would like to say on that. I think as far as Cardi and Nikki go, leave that lady alone. Y'all leave each other alone. That'll be good. And leave Offset alone. Let him go over there in his Michael Jackson clothes and do what he want to do. He don't want to be married. I don't care how much he begs you, honey. Just move on. He don't want to be married. I don't think he does. If he wanted to be married, he would not be embarrassing you like that in public in my opinion now we're going to talk about this a little bit a little bit bitty bitty bit finish this on out with uh christian keys now i said i believe christian keys and i do believe christian keys with his criticism now i was over there minding my own business and i was watching scotty's show and he was talking about funky that need and so I, I always give Funky the benefit of the doubt. If I watch another content creator,
<laughs> we are back. We are back. I had to pause for a minute because my doctor was calling. Um, you know, I was talking about my little feral children. She was telling me I need to go ahead and come on in, come on in, and let her uh, be taken care of. But let me uh, give a little history on Christian. A lot of people, even black people, are saying they don't know him. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Kind of weird. <laughs> but, because I, I think that all black people will like me and watch all the Queen's Men. If you don't know him from all the Queen's Men and you watch, you know, uh, his CBS show, he was in. Uh, all rise too. I mean, it's not, and he was in sinus and center. So I'm just trying to get you a little history on him because a lot of people are saying they don't know the kids, but they do know somebody that they think may have done something to him. Um. Now, when I was over there on Scottish Channel, um, he was saying that. Um, he felt that, you know, the man was telling the truth. Okay. But because he was rebutting what Funky said, I'm saying this to bring context to what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure 100% of. Funky really believes, believes um, Christian. Now, I don't hardly ever watch TGIF, so I don't know what his conversation has been like between he and Claudia, but, you know, and like what I put in the comments with um, Scott, to me, I said this prior to what Funky said on his uh, show, not his TGIF show, but his YouTube show. I said, no, I'm not saying that he's not believable because of what happened to him. I do believe he was harassed. I do believe that he um, was forced to do some things that he may have not wanted to do or suggested that he be forced to do some things he may. But Christian kept saying, I'm straight. I don't swing that way. I don't swing that way. And, you know, with my Elin Harris education, <laughs> it, it, he told me, and I said this about, you know, what I say about, you know, DL brothers. And I'm not saying Christian is DL, but I was like, that does protest too much. And Funky said, I didn't say it. I didn't say I wasn't thinking it, but Funky said that this, he believes, and through his sources, he believes that this is a gay for pay type of situation. Don't believe me? Go over there and watch Funky show. Got more subscribers than I do. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, he said what? I was thinking, because like I said, I got to know too much of the down low lifestyle by reading Elian's books. Now, again, I'm not saying that Christian is DL. I'm just saying that he was putting so much emphasis on how he didn't swing that way. So my antennas went up. And then when Funky said, well, he said that brought all together what I was thinking. In some cases, I believe that, you know, that some things may have transpired with monies. Okay? Just saying. Do I believe that it was TP? Hmm. My channels went up and say, hmm. I'm leaning more towards TP than anybody else. I would just like to see somebody come out and say it wasn't or it was. I mean, the guessing game is getting old. 
if he's already been paid, like some people suspect, allegedly, then um, that does not absolve criminal cases. And that's the same thing I said about Diddy. A lot of people are saying, well, Diddy's not going to jail. He's not going to jail because Cassie's can't talk. That's for civil. I keep telling you, it is a whole different ball game between civil and criminal cases. Cass can go to uh, Timbuktu, India, and hide in the jungles where they don't allow uh, other human beings because they shoot them on sight with arrows. She can go into that island right there. However, if there is a criminal FBI investigation against these people in Hollywood for doing these things to these people, I don't care how much money they have been paid, they can still come and face criminal charges again they could still face criminal charges now Cassie might be hesitant to testify but in a criminal fbi case cia case <laughs> yo uh tight lips don't mean nothing to them it offer you some witness protection but if they subpoena you to testify that's what they, they fully expect you to cooperate with them. And that's that on it. And that's not just about, just about me watching those good criminal shows and good ghosts. The good ghost series. That's me knowing some things into the criminal justice system because we had to know into the criminal justice system with me working as a social worker because we were mandated court reporters and we became officers of the court and had to work very closely with DAs and defense attorneys and judges. I'm just saying what I know through my little uh, court <laughs> appointed services as a DHS social worker. And that's even with me living in a small town. And I'm telling you, you will be amazed at the things I had to study <laughs> in order to have that job. And with all of that being said, as I do, when I close, I'm going to chunk them up to see. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. This is some good conversation going on over here. Commercial free entertainment. Come on in. Come on in.